All right, all right, all right. Will Grant, you look amazing on the big screen, dude. <laughs> Thank you so much, man. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic. You know, I am one of those probably strange coronavirus affected people that really enjoys being inside and 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 doing this kind of stuff. Yeah. So very excited about that, man. <laughs> So you enjoy being inside. At first, I thought you were saying that you got affected by the coronavirus. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you said affected, not infected. Okay. <laughs> awesome. I'm just going to take care of a little feedback that we are having with Zoom. Dude, I'm excited for this, man. My first webinar. I'm ready to get this going, man. I'm I'm, I'm stoked. <laughs> oh, well, Will, look, I know it's Saturday. I know you probably sh would be training right now yeah. <laughs> uh, doing something, but I know you're also recovering as well. But before we get started, I know we have we have a lot of people coming in the queue now, Will, so that's, that's awesome. Um, before we get started, you know, I know this has been a transformational time around the globe. Just curious, out yeah. of Tampa, Florida, what are, what are you feeling? How are you coping with this? And um, what are you going to do moving forward? Um, I think everyone is just kind of like in awe of not really knowing what to think or what to do about the whole thing. But it, I mean, it's pretty crazy. I think so far, the only way that I felt too affected in Florida is just so many people are not working. So a lot of my friends are actually losing their jobs if they work at like a restaurant or a bar or something like that. And uh, because we live in Florida, we do have to buy our water. Um, so like all the grocery stores are kind of running out of a lot of things and water's getting kind of scarce at this point where like I even told my roommates, hey, we should probably pick up a gallon every time we go out because they're limiting of how much we can go buy. So somebody doesn't just go and buy the whole stock. Um, and when I went in there, they were like, yeah, we just don't know when our next shipment is coming in. So it's like, that kind of hit home of like, oh, wow, this is really serious. But I mean, my plan is just to keep focusing on what I can control. And, you know, that's my own health, and my own happiness. And I understand that keeping my stress down and making sure I'm not stressing about things that I can't control is what's going to be best for my immune system and best for my environment, the people I care about as well. So, you know, the higher I can keep my own spirits, the healthier I can keep myself, the healthier the people around me are going to be. And I'm just going to keep focusing on that. And almost just let whatever be be you know just be in that present moment and just try to give my best self to each moment i don't have much control over what's going on but um over than what's in my own environment you know sure wow those are that that's pretty awesome perspective there <laughs> now now will probably a lot of the people watching this webinar today know who you are i'm probably the odd face in this <laughs> webinar that they're going who is that guy so yeah. I, um, I am Edwin Adams. I'm a pharmacist by trade, but my side hustle has been in the, the realm of leadership and personal development. So coming across transformational spirits like you, Will, is what my passion is because what you've been able to do through your transformation in body, mind, and spirit, I think there is a set of, of laws or rules around those transformations that are applicable across every domain of life, no matter who you are. So thank you for being a good teacher out there. Thank you for letting, letting me instigate and, and direct this conversation really ab about transformation and personal development across body, mind, and spirit. That's magical, man. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what I could, uh, what I would prefer to spend my time and energy on, honestly, with you and um, learning these things and kind of taking what I've learned through my experiences to help as many people as possible. You know, like that's what's going to make me feel the best. And that's what's going to be best for the people I care about is just taking what I learn and helping others, you know? Yeah. Awesome. So, Will, our paths crossed, I'm thinking about eight, years, ago. eight years ago. It's yeah, crazy, yeah. crazy yeah. how our paths crossed. There was a um, a local BMX affiliate here, a bike shop. And, mm -hmm. you know, he was really involved and he printed some of my t-shirts early on uh, when I was uh, getting into this public space of Instagram and webinars and LinkedIn. I just, I needed t-shirts. Well, he was a BMX shop, but he did t-shirts on the side. Mm -hmm. And I kind of got pulled into the BMX world. And one of the most captivating spirits out there 
was <laughs> the Will Grant. And, you know, we've been walking beside each other in website development and other yeah. stuff all these yeah. years. And now we're here talking yeah. about personal development and transformation. So clearly you have made a transformation from professional BMX athlete and bodybuilder to now something else. And I'd love for you to tell that story because I know a lot of the listeners on the line know you as the persona on social media. Yeah, for sure. But really what creates, has created this opportunity for you is your story. Would you mind sharing a little bit about your story with us? Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, man, it's everything that you just said. It makes me think it's crazy how, you know, a seed planted can really grow into a full tree you know, and it can take a long time of that whole process of growth and transformation to really happen. But dude, it started off, man, I was, um, I think 11 years old was when I really started training really hard to even become a professional athlete. And my dad got me one of the top Olympic coaches when I was 11 years old. And that's when I began really diving into how can I make my body perform as best as possible. Um, and in hopes to become a professional athlete one day. And I, from 11 to about 16, 17, I was literally training to be pro and I finally turned pro. And one of my very first pro races, um, I tore my ACL and had um, a pretty gnarly injury. And then literally it took a year to heal from that. My very first race back, I retore my ACL. It took me another year to heal from that. And my first race back, I ended up breaking my heel. So during that time, yeah, like, it, I mean, it was crazy. So during this almost three or four year fiasco um, of getting injured, that's when I, all I knew really was training at that point. So that's when I became a personal trainer. I started doing bodybuilding and I started just um, learning how I can make my body look the way I wanted to. Um, so I spent like the first part trying to learn how I can make my body perform as best as possible. And then that led into um, how can I make my body look as good as possible? And during this whole time, and then I eventually got back into racing. And this time I put all the value in myself, in what I knew and how I could um, make my body look. And so what I could physically do and what I physically look like is really what I put all my value in. And it it just brought a lot of imbalance and it brought a lot of um, issues later on down the road because of so many things were in balance. And when I was around 24 years old, that's when really everything just started breaking down. Um, like I started getting hurt pretty bad. Like my knee exploded, my collarbone broke, I had pains during my whole body. And like, that's not to mention really the mental anxiety that I was going through, which was almost even worse and was leading up to that. So like even over those times where I was really trying to build my own ego to make myself um, look as good as possible and to perform as good as possible of everything that I put my value into. Um, I was going through a lot of mental anxiety as well of just like not knowing why I didn't feel good. When I thought what I needed to do to feel good was to make myself great. And then, and then at the end of the day, I, I didn't have any really strong of relationships. I didn't um, feel good when I woke up. I just felt lost. I had no real reason or purpose to put my energy towards other than that instant pleasure. And as soon as I started, any time things would slow down, um, my mind would go to places that were uncomfortable. So like almost everybody does, we do things to help us distract ourselves from what our body or what our universe is trying to tell us. If it's our phone, if it's drugs, if it's food, if it's alcohol, well, I mean, I pretty much was doing it all. Like, you know, my body was starting to hurt worse and worse. I, you know, my mind was starting to hurt worse and worse. And I just wouldn't slow down on any of the negativity that I was doing because the more I slowed down, the more I had to sit face to face with that issue. And it was uncomfortable. Um, and then of course, when you're getting all these signs around you and you're not listening and you know, I, I was like, Oh, when I was getting these body pains, oh, I'm too tough to feel this pain. Or like, even in the pains in my mind, I was like, Oh, that's not real. You know what I mean? That's not real. I was too tough for that. And then it just gets louder and louder and louder and louder. And then that's what took me to the point where 
literally everything broke where like my whole body was breaking down. My mind was breaking down to where like at the lowest point, it got to the point where like the doctors were saying that I may never walk again without pain. And I was just stuck in my house. Every step that I took was painful. And then every thought that I thought was painful, you know, and, and when it brought me to my lowest point is kind of when I first started, I just wanted to feel better, right? Like I just wanted to feel better because I was hurting in every single way. So then when that doctor told me that I literally put everything, I made this devotion with myself of, look, I got nothing else to spend my time and energy on. I'm going to devote whatever time and energy I have towards just learning how to feel better. Hmm. And, and that's what I did really. Um, so I started to understand like just my, my pains in my knees and my pains in my back. Cause like I had so much pains in my body from my ankles to my knees, my back, my shoulders. Like I had so much pain that I wasn't even sleeping at night just from these agony pain in my hips and like, and then the thoughts were no better, you know? So then I started understanding that the more I was understanding my movement and I could move a little bit better, that I was getting less pains in my body and that would make my mind feel a little bit better, you know? And then I was learning that the better that I could think, you know, like, you know, the better of my thinking habits, just like my moving habits, then the better my mind was feeling. Hmm. Um, and, and for the first time in my life, I was able to sit down long enough and read a book, you know, and I just began reading constantly and breathing constantly. And that was probably the biggest thing that changed everything was I couldn't train myself physically. And that was pretty much all I knew my whole entire life. Um, and I kept hearing things around me about meditation is the way to exercise the mind. And, but I just could never build a good habit of it. But every time I did it, I instantly felt better, you know, like, you know, I felt more calm, I felt relaxed, like, I felt better than I can describe. I just was only doing it like once a month, right? You know, and then I just never built this habit. And then when my brother, um, who's been really one of the biggest inspirations to my whole life, he told me about this Wim Hof breathing, like we were FaceTiming almost just like this. And he talked me through around and, and the first time I ever did that, when he was first telling me about it, I thought he was crazy. I was like, all right, yeah, like this is going to make you feel this good and you're going to learn how to c control your immune system and control your moods. Like, all right, dude, like that seems crazy. And then, but I don't trust and believe in anyone as much as I believe in my brother. So if he's telling me something, like I'm at least going to hear him out, okay? So he talked me through just one session of like three rounds of breathing. And like all of a sudden in those few moments after those three rounds of breathing, I felt better than I felt in years. Like, and, and I can't explain to you why at this point, all I knew was I felt more at peace with my mind and my body and like everything just felt better than it's felt since I was a kid, you know, like, and, th and, and so all I wanted to do at this point was feel better. So I kept doing that every single day. Like I put this one habit of like, if I don't accomplish anything, I just want to do that one time a day, you know, for as long as I can. I don't know if it's going to be one month, six months, a year. And like, I've been doing it every day since, <laughs> you know, like, like, and the more I did this, the more I was really learning how to connect with myself and like understanding of like, all these pains in my mind and pains in my body were my body and mind trying to speak to me, send me signals. Hmm. But I just didn't understand the language that my body was speaking because I, I was speaking in my ego, just my same separate language where I was separating my mind from my body, not realizing it's one big piece. Your thoughts command all the cells in your whole entire body. Hmm. So like if I could just improve my thoughts for 10 minutes a day, my cells would feel better a little bit better and that would create this little bit of momentum right mm. and then I, I just began doing this every day and the more i did it the more i connected with myself and the more i was learning how to understand what was making me feel bad and understand what was making me feel really good and then i started documenting everything in this little notebook that everyone sees me kind of take everywhere like i i, I just began documenting 
everything of every day of like how my day was going and what I did that day to make it feel really good. And then I, like I realized if I just quit focusing on all the bad shit that I was doing and just tried to do as much good shit as possible, all of a sudden I didn't have as much space for all the bad shit that was making me feel bad, you know? So like, so I just began breathing every day, which led into reading every day. And then I started yoga and I started doing all these things that were just making me feel really, really good. And then I understand that the better I felt like had more to do with not so much of what I was doing for myself, but like um, how I was contributing. Right. So I, like I first noticed because doing this breathing every day for the first time in my life, I was present with my life because normally I was thinking so fast and doing so much. I could never pay attention to what was going on around me because I was too busy stuck in my own head. Hmm. And, and for the first time, like I started just noticing these life cues of the universe always telling, like always telling us things every day, but we're just not listening because we're so stuck in our own thoughts. But then I started noticing that, the more little things that I could do to make my roommate have a better day, the better day that I had, because he was in a better mood and energy is energy. It's hard to be miserable when you have happy people around you. So like, that's just one thing that I paid attention to of like, yo, the better that I um, made the closest people to me have a better day, the better my days went. And the more effective I could be, towards making their days better was the more I connected with what I was really good at. Right. Mm -hmm. Then I could affect their days even more. And, and and that just kept leading and kept evolving. And then I started realizing that, look, if I wanted to really feel like feel at my absolute best and live my absolute best life and step into my biggest potential, I had to somehow connect with what I'm innately good at and learn how to develop those skills as much as I can and then contribute that to something bigger than myself. You know, if that's my community, if that's my world, if that's my team, if that's my friends, if that's my family, whatever that is, I had to just contribute to something bigger than myself. And then now that I was reading books more, like I remembered this quote that I read from Abraham Lincoln. And it said, if I wanted to cut down a tree, I would spend the first four hours just sharpening my ax. And when that came to my mind, and it was also with meditation, I started remembering things that I've learned when I was eight years old. Hmm. You know, like it's weird. The more I connected with my breath, I was remembering lessons that I was getting as a kid that I just didn't remember. I was relearning things that I already knew. And then it took me back to the first time I ever flew an airplane. I think I was seven, eight years old. And, and on that airplane, the stewardess said, to their mothers, be, be, before you even help out your kids, put on your own mask. Mm -hmm. Because if you cannot help yourself, you won't be able to help anyone else around you. And that's when like, that just, oh, okay. Like, yeah, that was my light bulb of like, okay, if I really, you know, like the more people I help, the better I feel. So if I really wanted to help as many people as much as possible, I had to first get my own shit together. <laughs> you know, like I had to first make myself feel really good because no one's going to listen to me. I'm not going to be able to help anyone else if I'm not living my best life. So then I started to learn of like, you know, how can I live my best life? And then I went on this new like three year path of like what it's like one connecting with myself. Like that's one thing I never, I never quit doing is I made sure I developed an everyday practice just to connect with my breath and connect with myself and connect with my body. So I'm aware of where my body is at in that moment and what exactly it takes to be my best self in each moment. And then, yeah. And like, that's what kind of brought us up to this point of like, like where I'm at now. And I just kind of have used that process of documenting that process of like, look, how can I make myself feel as best as possible? And I started using all these things that are working and using all these things that are not working and like what is the most bang for your buck of like these habits and routines that that you know I've been using on myself that make me feel good of like how can I now start helping other people who are just wanting more out of themselves and wanting more out of their own lives and then you know that's what led me into really my whole social media my whole course my whole program my whole website of just 
constantly pushing myself and sharpening my own saw, learning how to make myself as best as possible. And then like figuring out what's working best for me. Cause I've been really studying health and fitness and learning how to get most out of myself since I was 11 years old, you know? And like, I've been on this path without even knowing I was on this path, you know, like, like I, I had to go through all of those awful times in my life to learn the lessons that I learned to help other people to hopefully they don't have to learn those same lessons or spend as much time trying to figure this shit out because like, like, I mean, I know I'm young, but I've been through a lot where I figured out a lot of shit and I really feel like I need to get this stuff out to other people and I need to like, cause that's, what's going to make me feel really good. You know, yeah. it, you know, it's taking everything that I'm learning into because one thing that almost I hear from everyone, how they're struggling with their own version of this, you know, like people are struggling with like understanding why they don't feel good. And like, they're spending all of their time and energy just to get through the day of like the stuff that they have to do. And then by the end of the day, they're drained. They have no time or energy to really devote towards things that they really care about. If that's their family or their art or their contribution or their project, you know, we all have that thing that we truly care about you know, that's really important to us. Like that could be anything, but we're not being able to create these habits that help us really work on those things because everything around us is just pulling us down. And we don't have that, um, like mental strength to be able to fight against that resistance and build that momentum, you know, and like all these things that I've, cause, cause I've been there. And then all these things that I've kind of, I've discovered and I've unlocked within myself just helps me like, at the end of the day, like I'm, I'm motivated, you know, like, like, like I feel good in what I have to do because the more that you're connected with your strengths and like contributing that to something bigger, you just automatically jump into that flow state and everything starts rolling when your mind and body and soul is just aligned with the universe and your purpose and your reason to be. But it's, but it's, it's not like we wake up and we're all of a sudden connected with our purpose. Like, we have to wake up and practice connecting to our purpose every day. Hmm. You know, like, like it's not just there. We have to dig deep within ourselves to stepping out of our comfort zone to find out like what we're truly capable of every single day to figure out, to reach what our potential really is. Wow. Will you just summed up the whole <laughs> self-help industry in 17 minutes and 20 seconds. Yo, that was crazy. <laughs> I think uh, when we walk into bookstores now, it's not going to be this huge section of books. It's just going to be yours. That's yeah, it. No, no, no. Grant. <laughs> no, no we're all in this together and we all have a different perspective. You know, like that's the beautiful thing about this whole story is this is just my perspective, but we all have our own unique special gift and perspective to offer to the world. Like we just have to connect with it and it doesn't connect without us taking that intention to connect with it. You know, I love that. I love that. Will, we've got a lot of people on the line now and Ooh, that's exciting. I guess I, I, I want to ask them a quick question if they would, I'm going to launch our first poll and I'm just going to give them a few seconds, but what would they like to learn most about, moving forward in their journey. And it can be a wellness journey, it can be a fitness journey, it can be whatever journey it is. I, I chose wellness just for the generalness of the term. Yeah. And, but I was just curious. And I like that term because a lot of people tend to separate the mind and the body. And that's one thing that I figured out through this whole journey is it's 100% connected. You know, the better I made my, my body feel, the better my mind felt. The better I made my mind feel, the better my body felt. You know, so yeah. I think wellness is actually a good word to describe the overall well-being of your organism you know yeah. so will i'm going to end the poll and we're going to see the results the preliminary results are it's an even spread between nutrition mindset and breathing so oh. uh yeah it looks like breathing you must have captivated the audience with um what you said about breathing and i know i've got some questions that were sent in to us about breathing but will you covered so much in, yeah. in that. Really? that you know, it's funny because that's what I get asked about the most because I really feel like that's what's helped me the most. You know, like that was my big aha was starting that breathing and like just making sure I connect with myself every day. You know, well, I like, think that's the problem, Will. I, I, 
having been in the personal development industry for now over two decades, I see a pattern. And I think most of us, and, and me included at the beginning of my journey, believe that passion and purpose was a destination that you arrive to after some investment of time and energy, it would come to you. And, and I think now listening to what you say and what I've experienced, that's an incorrect assessment of pur purpose and passion. Purpose and passion are programmed within you and your job here on this planet is to go discover that and connect with it inside and then go share it outside. Exactly. It's an everyday discovery until we quit doing that. And when we quit doing that is when we're dead, you know, yeah. like we got to keep discovering that every day. And like you said, sharing it. But we don't pause again. You experienced that in your young professional career. You did not stop long enough to move past the narrative that was playing in your head. And each of us has one of those records that continually plays that aligns with either a, a, a negative self image, yep. a misbelief, a fear of some sort, and you're not hearing truth, you're hearing narrative. You so, know, and that's why the breathing is so good because sometimes you gotta let that run itself out. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because once you get past it, like you have to sit with yourself long enough to realize that's bullshit. <laughs> you know, you know, but that takes time of sitting with yourself because I promise you, if you sit with yourself long enough, your strengths are going to come up. You know, it's always just that first initial bullshit that's on that first layer that sits there at first. And like, it took me time of sitting through that first layer of facing that face to face of what that first layer is. But then I promise you one thing, if you keep sitting, you're going to go deeper than that. Hmm. And we are so much deeper than this first layer of this monkey brain of the shit that we constantly tell ourselves, you know, and it's an everyday discovery of, letting that talk itself out so we can really get down to deeper levels of ourselves so we can really start to understand where we are and what we're here for you know yeah that's amazing so everybody listening to the call or on this webinar you have an opportunity to ask questions there's a q a feature down at the bottom there's a webinar chat feature i'm going to be watching that for will and when questions pop up i'll i'll find a spot to to ask will but you know, you covered so much. I don't know if we're going to fit it all in this webinar. So guess what? We're going to have to have a chat with Will Grant yeah. again to cover I'm, a lot of this. But you, I'm you, excited. You've done a lot, Will. And I think since I'm going to, I have my own selfish questions that I wrote down, but I think I'm going to defer to the audience here because they really wanted to, to know a lot about nutrition, about fitness, and about breathing. So I'm just going to launch another quick poll. I promise I'm not going to wear y'all out on polls. But this question is, what are your current health, fitness, and nutrition goals? And this is multiple choice. You can choose more than one answer. I'll give you just a few seconds. But Will, you, you talked about at the beginning of your story, what things looked like. And you worked really hard to work on the outside persona of Will Grant first. And I think that's what social media captivates that and influences us to do, but it negates or forgets about the inside job of, yeah. of what it takes to look a certain way. Sure. I affectionately call that the aesthetics of leadership because when it comes to transformations, I believe that the body follows that which was transformed inside first. So if you're unable to accomplish fitness transformations on the outside, it might be because you haven't spent enough time on the inside job first. Yeah. What would you say about that? Yeah, I mean, it, it's definitely 100% connected. And, and then a, what I've noticed is the outside is just a mirror of what's going on inside. You know, uh, and that mirror, goes from, yes. you know, and that's going from everything from even the way we look to the way we view other people, you know, one thing that I, I've learned because all my biggest discoveries really happened during that Wim Hof breathing of every single day. That's when everything would settle down and I would make my big ahas. But one of my big ahas during the breathing was I noticed the way that I was viewing the people around me was the same way I was viewing myself. So for example, you know, if I'm walking down the street and if I see somebody walking down the street and my first reaction was something negative about how he looked, right? 
I noticed that I did that same thing to myself. Mm. Um, and then I noticed the same way that I was talking to myself, the same way I was talking to the people around me. Like, and then I just noticed this mere reflection, right? And I had a really hard time not putting my own self down, right? And then I also noticed that when I was seeing other people, my first reaction was to notice what was wrong with them instead of to noticing like what was good about them, right? So then I, I just started building up a practice and it wasn't easy because building up new practices are never easy, right? Mm -hmm. So I started building up a practice of every time I see somebody of what do you think this person's strengths are, right? Because the more that you could even understand and connect with the strengths of the people around you, the more successful you will be in anything because you'll be able to pull out everyone's best side of the people around you and then it brings up the whole tribe. Yeah. Okay? So then, like, then the more I just started developing this habit and the mindfulness of noticing when I was doing when I was doing that came from the everyday practice of the meditation. You know, if I wasn't practicing meditation every day, I wouldn't be mindful enough to know when my mind was going somewhere negative about another person or myself. Yeah. But when I did, I instantly became like, yo, um, you just thought that when you could be thinking about like, you know, I bet he's really kind to his wife or he's a great father or something like that. Right. Yeah. Or like maybe because every single person on this planet, it doesn't matter how much you hate them. Every single person on this planet has something really good about them. Yeah. They just haven't been able to develop that good thing and to be able to bring that good thing out to other people. So other or they're people. not aware of it. They don't even know it's there. Exactly. Because they're not aware of it. And, you know, and their environment doesn't bring that out of them. Okay. Uh, yeah. so, so it's a good practice to almost search for it within every single person. Mm -hmm. And when you search for someone's greatest gift in every single person that you talk to, guess what? your greatest gift starts to come out. Yeah, you see it a little more clearly. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And, 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 and then once you start getting in the synchronicity of like noticing everyone's strengths and your strengths coming out, then all of a sudden all the shit around you is just improving for no reason. That's <laughs> harmony. You know, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, like everything is getting better because instead of your friends bringing their worst self to your hangout sessions, they're bringing their best selves and then you bring in your best self and then all these crazy ideas come and then you and your whole group of friends and your whole family are just on the come up. Yeah, that's awesome. You know, like it, it's crazy because energy is energy and when you raise your energy, the other people's energy raises and if you can learn how to raise their energy, then we're all, we're all on the come up. I love it. We'll hear the results from that last poll. A lot of people want to get stronger and a lot of people want to take control of food and nutrition. Just so happens you seem to be an expert in both of those. So we're going to get yeah. to those results real soon. Yeah. I spent a lot, a lot of years of my life studying those two things, you know, like eat, even when I was 11, 12 years old, I, I was studying what foods were good, you know, but then unfortunately, like most of our information is just kind of BS of what we're given about what foods are really good. And now that the internet's been out long enough, all this crazy information is coming out and everyone's confused. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's like, wait, are eggs good or eggs bad? Is meat good? Is meat bad? Is, is rice good or bad? Like nobody knows, you know? Too much and, information. Uh, it's noisy. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's like, are we supposed to take eight meals a day? Or are we supposed to take one meal a day? You know, like- The 40% no protein or 30% protein? Yeah. Right? And, 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 I'm gonna and, chase our tail on that. Yeah, and it's been a mess, you know. Like when I was being a full time personal trainer and like a full time, um, you know, I was full time in personal training, and my whole other time past that, I was training for bodybuilding competitions, and I was eating seven, eight meals a day, and telling all my clients to eat at least five or six meals a day, and you know they would lose weight, but they weren't feeling good, you know, like like like. I was shredded. Like I could see every striation and every muscle that I had, but I felt like shit. Yeah. You know, like, like, like I, I felt awful. And like when you align your gut with your mind, cause your gut is your second brain, what you're feeding your gut has 100% of how you're going to feel not only physically, but mentally as well. You know, like they've, they've discovered so much new information in the past five, 10 years about, well, it's funny that, 
the, the Western medicine are discovering things that the East have been talking about for thousands for a of long years. time, yeah. you know, but then we've had this separation and now that we're starting to really advance in science. So well, we're realizing, holy shit, the East had this shit figured out for a couple thousand years. And the East have been saying that our gut is our second brain, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, what's controlling the way we're really feeling. That's really controlling our moods. So if you're feeling negative, like, improve your diet. I promise you, you'll start feeling more positive. You know, like they're correlating and connecting so much of the people in prison and their negative violent or behaviors towards their diet, mm. you know, of eating like processed sugar and this corn stuff, you know, and the more that we can eat naturally and, and like eat things that are connected with the earth that are living, that are alive, that feed our gut microbiome, the better that we're going to feel physically, you know? And, and, um, yeah, like it's, it, it, it's, it's been a journey. Like I, I even went from doing an eight day fast, you know, I was learning about fasting and like fasting is one of the best things just to let your gut almost reset. And, and it's truly amazing what your body can accomplish when it's not just always working on digesting food. Cause if you're having seven, eight meals a day, your body is spending overtime all day on just digesting what you're eating. And that's going to bring your mood down. It's going to bring your energy down. It's going to bring everything down. Then I suppose that if you give that a break, then your body starts cleaning out all your brain fog. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, oh, oh shit. Then, the, the, then you could see the world or your world from a little bit clearer perspective. And your decision making is maybe just five to 10% better. And if your decision making is five to 10% better, like that, that's, over a month, all of a sudden you're in a different place. Over a couple of years, your life is in a different place because it's like that shift that just changes a couple of degrees. Over a few months, they're in a completely different continent. Yeah. Well, some great questions coming in. I'm going to switch to those. Um, we've got the first one from Barcelona. This is from your friend Eduardo Gracia. Hola, um, mi amigo. And the sun is out in Barcelona. I wish the sun were out here in Louisiana. So the sun is always out in Florida. Welcome, sure. Eduardo. I see him on the call. So, Eduardo, you asked a great question over email. Will, how gradually did you immerse yourself in the Wim Hof method? He does right now three to five rounds every day, and he's done that about for a week. When and how did you take the next step beyond that first introductory week? Um, well, dude, if he's doing three to five rounds every day, that is awesome. Like, keep doing what you're doing, and then listen to yourself. You know what I mean? Like listen to your own body. Like you, the more you do this, the more you'll know how much you really need. Okay. So like my path is going to be a little bit different from yours, but that's okay. It's still the same story. You know what I'm saying? But just keep doing what you're doing and then you'll know kind of how gradual that you're going to want to do that. Okay. But I would say just don't miss more than one day in a row. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's when it's so easy just to step off, you know, and that's one rule that I gave myself is who knows, like something crazy can happen, especially in these crazy times today, you know, <laughs> like, like something crazy can happen where you miss one day. Just try not to miss two days because then that's when you start losing the habit and, and you'll start to know really, um, exactly how much to do. Like, even if you only have time to do one round, do that one round, you know, and then you'll be able to know each day of how much time you have for each single day. Does that make sense? Yeah. Hopefully. So what's yeah. the minimum? You, you need to be yeah. doing how Just many? Just one days? round, like three minutes, five, okay. you know, like, like the minimum is just starting. Just start. Okay. So just start it every day and that's going to build the momentum. And then when you're feeling really good, hit five rounds every single day, hit three rounds every single day. But at least get one round. Just so it's like hunger. It. When you feel yeah. it, you need to go satisfy that. So instead exactly. of feeling, like you when you're breathe. feeling your mind is in overdrive, stop and breathe, but make sure that you stop and connect with yourself every single day. Love it. Breathe. Love it. So Eduardo continues. He said, do you use these techniques and cold practices with any special diet? And how do you mix this with the gym? So I guess in essence is breathing a component enhanced by one or the other how do they interplay okay. so a few things on that one the effects are always more on an empty stomach okay so 
So like, that's another beautiful thing about fasting. So if your body's not working on digesting, your body can go deeper in your breath and deeper into your own physiology. So that's why I like to do it every single morning when I wake up, um, before I have my first meal and before I touch my phone too. So, uh, so like, that's kind of like the two rules for me. I haven't earned the right to touch my phone and connect with other people until I've connected with myself. Got it. <laughs> you know, awesome. like I've got to put my own mask on before I can help somebody else. So, or before my phone and every single day. So on an empty stomach, you'll feel a lot more. And then as far as what, um, as far as with working out, Again, I, I like to have that in my morning routine and then every single time that I'm going to work out and before every single workout session, I'll actually do 30 to 50 breaths, but instead of letting it out and just doing a breath hold, I'll let it out and do as many push-ups as I possibly can while holding my breath. You know, and like I, I've had all my clients do this since I've been doing this. I've had all my friends who are professional athletes, they're all doing this too. And it's really amazing because you're just pressing that fresh blood and oxygen right into all of your muscles. You're turning on all your cells. You're getting your mind and body present in that moment and ready to perform mentally and physically. So I will do that round of breathing with the push-ups before every single one of my workout routines. And that's kind of how I, I, I use the breathing with my workouts and with my diet as well. Okay, so there's no particular fat, fat or carb component that makes breathing enhanced or not enhanced or? Um, not that I know of. Okay. All I know is on an empty stomach, you'll do better. But as far as like the, the better you eat, the more that your gut can connect with everything. Okay. Right? So the goal with your breath is to be able to connect with your body and connect with, with, with your everything, the deepest part of your brain stems, your fight or flight, you know, that's how you're going to learn to connect with yourself. And the better that your gut microbiome is, the better it's all going to be able to connect. And that's going to come with really fruits, vegetables, and nuts. <laughs> all right. You know, so we're like, get to like, your backyard and how you design that, because I think food is a yeah. question that a lot of, a lot of people have. Um, around cool. breathing, uh, to stay on the same topic, we have a live question uh, from Gloria. So I'm going to see if we can answer that live. Her question is, how was, how has the breathing helped you in remembering the greatness within you? Yeah, 100%. Like it took the time to get past that first layer of bullshit, you know, you know, and then even when I notice I'm doing that breathing, like say if I do three rounds, that first round that I'm doing, what I notice is it just gets me through the first layer of my constant brain thinking about all the shit that's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then like it takes rounds and sessions and sessions of that's where you're connecting with the deepest part of, of yourself. And the more you do it, the more you can connect, you know, 100%. And, and that's almost like my biggest purpose in doing it. My, my biggest intention is because the better you can connect with yourself, the better you're going to feel and the better you're going to be able to contribute and to bring value towards other people. So that's the, bre the breathing is the connection to self. Yeah. You're like, your breath is like your doorway in, right? Okay. Like when you just put your mind towards your breath, that is putting your mind in that present moment with yourself. Cause that's, you know, there's only one breath, you know, the next breath is, is a different moment. Right. So, so when you're bringing that breath in, that is taking your mind toward your body in that present moment. And that's when yourself starts to speak and you start to understand what yourself is trying to say and your highest self is speaking and you're connecting with it every single day, but your breath is your doorway into everything internal. For sure. Wonderful. Gloria also asks, how can we help others to get convinced about using breath and come back to the present moment. I love this question. panic epidemic we are all going through. Yeah, I love this question. And that's one thing I noticed at first. When I was first discovering all this stuff, I was telling everybody around me, yo, you gotta do this breathing, you gotta do this squat <laughs> sits, you gotta do this hanging. And I was just annoying them. <laughs> you know, like, you know, you, you know, I really was. They weren't listening until they seen me do it without them trying to do it. Hmm. Like focus on me, you know, and then people around me didn't start doing it until I was doing it for months. 
you know? And then when they noticed a change within myself, then they, I went from trying to beg them to try this shit with me to, Hey, what do you, to now they're asking me, Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, like, Hey, why do you feel so good? You know, like, like, why are you happy all the time? And, and, and like, yo, how did your knee get fixed? You know, like after they said, like, and they started asking me when I started just focusing on myself, putting my own mask on, you know, and energy is energy. You have no control over the other people's energy. And the only way you do is to raise your own energy. So you be the light, you be the example and you do the best you can. And then the better you can do that, the more they will notice, but you can't put your attention on what they're doing. You can only put your attention on being your best self. And that's going to make everyone around you that you care about step up their game to be their best self. That's how we help. That's awesome. All right. Another question, Michael Fuentes, aside from Wim Hof, what other breathing methods do you utilize? Or is this it? Is this, is this your go-to right now? Cause it works. Um, so I've been like, I'm always down to try anything else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, cause, cause that's how you learn new good shit, you know? So, so first I, like when I first started, I had no idea how to meditate at all. Um, my roommate's brother, Josh Smith and my roommate were doing this 10 minute guided meditation on YouTube. And that's the, like, it's so easy. Just type in, if you got five minutes, type in five minute guided meditation. And there's gonna be a professional who does this for a living, guiding you through a free five minutes or 10 minutes, however long you have. And that's how I first started. And cause I couldn't just sit still in my own mind. You know, I wasn't there yet, I, I was going so crazy. And then I started doing the Wim Hof breathing and then I had another athlete friend tell me about a type of meditation that helps you actualize the things that you want in your mind. It helps you actualize that in real life. And the way that is, is just take 25 breaths, right? So you breathe in one and during that first breath, you're trying to picture the letter one as, as clear as you possibly can during the whole inhale and the whole outhale. And then you go to two and then you go to three and then you go all the way to 25. And then when I first started doing this, I couldn't even picture a letter because my mind was going so fast and it was so hard. It was so difficult, but I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. And after a while I started to be able to really picture these numbers in my head. And then the better I got at that, the better I got at making my days go the way I planned it to go. Right. So if I pictured my day wanting to go like this, I, I got really good at making my day actually go like that. Hmm. Um, and then the less I did it, the less I was getting good at that, you know? So like, it's like brushing your teeth. If you quit brushing your teeth, they're going to rot. <laughs> you know? So, so like, that's how important it was. And then I'm, I remember this one time I was doing Wim Hof on the beach and I met, and this guy came up to me and was like, conscious breather you don't see that very often I've actually been a breath facilitator for like 40 years and like he's been teaching people how to breathe for 40 years and like I knew he knew something I didn't know so I, all right let's do that and let's he was going through like 45 minute to an hour session breathing rounds that were different but similar that was taking me to all these different crazy places you know so like any type of breathing I'm about like e e even if it's just driving in the car knowing my mind is going somewhere crazy just to feel my breath in each single moment to make sure I'm in that present moment. Like I'm just learning how to connect and build a relationship with my breath every single day in all different ways. And the more I can build that relationship w with my breath, the, the more I'm able to understand myself and the better I can understand myself, the more I can have control over my moods, have control over my happiness, and the more aware I am over my health, because I know if some muscle's tight or something in my body is going wrong and know that I need to eat this certain vegetable, like, you know these things when you have a relationship. It's kind of like if you are in a really, really strong marriage, you know if your wife or husband is getting upset before she says anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you, and, and, and if it's really strong, you almost know what's wrong. Okay. Absolutely. You know, or, and if you don't know what's wrong what, right away, if you sit there and listen and let them tell you, you'll start to learn what's wrong and then you'll know what to do. Oh, I love it. So, so two things, um, two questions came to mind about that. I know I've heard you say before that oxygen is the best drug. And the second thing I've heard you say, 
Uh, well, uh, the second comment that I want to make is that I think in society, we would rather Google Wim Hof and try to find biohack it and find the quickest way to do it yeah. rather than put in the work. So yeah. I'd like you to comment on those two things. Okay. So one thing, yeah, I mean, like every reason why we take drugs and drink alcohol and eat the bad food is just for that instant. I want to feel better. Right. And all this shit that, you know, that builds off that. Can we take those drugs? We want those dopamines. We want those cannabinoids. We want those DMT drugs to make us feel good in that moment. But we have access to all of them. <laughs> you know, like we have receptors in our brains and our bodies already because we have access to release these things in our mind. We just kind of have lost that because we don't connect with our breath. And like when you can breathe as deep as you possibly can and go into these moments, you're able to release all the shit that you're looking for. Like you're able to get high, like as Wim Hof says all the time, be able to get high on your own supply, you know, like and, yeah. you know, when you do this type of breathing, all of your chemistry, it releases that shit that you need to rebalance. And all of a sudden you feel like the good that you're searching for, you know, but like it, and then it doesn't have all the negative side effects that the antidepressants do, that all of the, you know, like the painkillers do. Like we have access to be able to relax our own muscles. We don't need muscle relaxers. Like we just have kind of lost that ability to access that part in our brain, which takes. Oh, come practice. on, Will. It's easier to take a pill. Come on, don't yeah. make me work. Yeah, it's easier. And then people get kind of like we get exactly what we're searching for if you're looking for that quick fix you're going to get the quick fix and quick fixes come with long-term consequences you know and then when you're really ready to heal and feel better you'll do the right thing you know and that and then that, that kind of goes into the second question say that second question one more time so i can make sure i give my absolute best answer so um the first one was oxygen as a drug and the second one was i think um since we're all so busy today and Wim Hof is going to be this new thing that I've yeah. got to try, I'd like to learn it as quick as possible and do it the minimum amount. Yeah. So how do I biohack breathing or is it even biohackable or do you got to put in so, the time? It's like anything in this life. The more you put in, the more you get out. Okay. You know, like, like 100%, like if you stop right now and spent five minutes just breathing, you're going to feel good for about five to 10 minutes. Like you'll feel really fucking good. Right. And if you do it tomorrow, you'll feel really good for about five to 10 minutes. But if you do that every single day, that's making your day just five to 10 minutes better, that five to 10% better. And that's what builds that momentum of really the big, big goals. But if you just want something right now, just do it right now. You'll feel better. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, and that's the best way that like, quick. You can't get any faster than that. Yeah, yeah. Like you, like, that's a beautiful thing. You get out of it what you put in. And if you want more, put in more. And you, you could read books all day. Cause like when my brother was first telling me about this, I started trying to watch every single video there is to figure out what is this shit? You know, like, how can I get these results? Right. Mm -hmm. But then like, I just had to do it. Like hmm. to really know what it is, feeling is truly understanding. The more that you actually do this and feel this, the more you'll understand yourself and the more you'll get out of it, you know? So like it's there, it doesn't, you know, make, like you get to pick how much you want out of it. Yeah. You know, it's so like- that's, that's one of those laws of leadership, Will, um, that I think you experienced in bodybuilding, you've experienced it in sport and now here, in this transformative experience you've been going through, there's a pattern between all of those. In order to get yeah. good as a pro athlete, you couldn't hack that, you had to work that. Same well, thing as a bodybuilder and a trainer, you had to look the part, you had to be the part. And now here you're having to do the exact same thing. So that's a truth in life yeah. that I think we need to accept in, into each of our respective journeys and then go out and do exactly that. Yeah, 100%, you know, and like, you've mentioned a few times like these laws that we all go by and like, and they've even asked a lot of questions about my diet and, you know, going back to the gut. Like I've learned probably my two biggest, biggest teachers were learning from myself and learning from my environment. Right. Mm. So, so if I wanted to learn from myself, obviously you've heard a million times I learned the most through this breathing, just connecting with my breath. And then past that is I wanted to learn growth and transformation through my environment. 
So that's what started my whole entire yard, right? Is like one is when I was researching so much of how can I eat the possible best for myself, came back, of course, like the more foods from the earth. And it kept coming to like the closer that that food is grown towards you, the, you know, the better it's going to be for you, you know, like the better those nutrients in that food is going to be able to align with your gut and your gut aligns it with your environment. And that's what builds this like connection of the synchronicity. Right. And so I just started planting anything that would grow in my area and just started building the soil. And, and the more I, I ate like natural organic foods, then the more everything could connect. And, and, going from learning from my environment, just watching that grow because I started with my front and backyard was just a sand pit. Right. Hmm. And then I learned that nothing was growing and still I started first building up the soil, which is like me sharpening my own ass. Right. And yeah. then I had to just kept planting seeds and the seeds were like the habits that I was doing every single day. Right. And then it took six months before I started seeing really any leaves or any really life start to really come out. You know what I'm saying? And then, and, and then it's taken a year or two to really start to get a fruit. And then I know it's going to take five to 10 years until I'm just having this abundance of food. I have so much, I don't know what to do with and I can offer it to everybody around me that I love and care about, you know? Wow. There's and, another law there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 100% is like just learning how everything on this planet grows and, and evolves and contributes like that, like that's been one of my biggest teachers past my own breath is connecting with myself and my environment. That's and, amazing. You know, and when I eat from my environment is what connects myself with my environment. Oh, nice. Nice. Awesome. Will, you must have a, well, you, clearly you have a global influence. We have a question coming in from Simone Fischler and forgive me. She's from Austria. Yeah, so their question is, Hey, thanks for your positive words. You broke down the Wim Hof breathing very simply. So finally I could understand and do it. Just do ever, it. That's how you'll really understand. Yeah. Nike had it with their logo. Just do it. Do you have, have you ever heard about Dr. Joe Dispenza pineal gland breathing and they continue. Maybe you can break that one down. Also send you all the best from Austria. That's awesome. Yeah, that is super cool. And yes, I know J Joe Dispenza. Like, that dude is the man. Do you know who that is? I do know Joe Dispenza. Uh, you, you, would, you know who all the good guys are. So, yeah, Joe Dispenza is the man. Like, that was one person that I was listening to almost daily basis when they were telling me I wasn't going to be able to walk again without pain. Hmm. And, and I, I mean, I was – that's what really, like, made me up my meditation. Like, yo, this dude was doing an hour a day trying to – try to imagine his spine in the perfect position. Like I need to be doing that, you know, <laughs> you know? So like, that's what I did was like, I literally went on the internet and started like figuring what a perfect knee looks like. And during my Wim Hof breathing, during my regular meditation, I would lay down and just per like imagining after all my cells are awoken up from my breathing, imagining these cells just working overtime on rebuilding my knee part. Ah, like, wow. sure enough that's yeah, visualization when yeah. The, yeah yeah and like like i'm not 100 sure exactly what he calls the pineal meditation i think it's something like that where you're um connecting to a certain part in your body but mm -hmm. i could be wrong but you're connecting to a certain part in your body and imagining that to do kind of mm -hmm. at your will um yeah. and and yeah i mean I, I did that and guess what when they took my images before all this to after like my cartilage grew back you know, like, and it's, it's been a long process. It wasn't easy, but our bodies are working on this constantly all the time. Yeah. If we just need to give it the space to do that. Yeah. 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 If we're not stressed from eating every two hours or from our outside environment that we're fighting, you know, because if we're fighting our outside environment, you know, of trying to make other things around it be a certain way that, you know, based on what we want or like, you know, it, it, if we do that with our, then it's not going to work. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you have to let your body relax so it could use all of your resources towards rebuilding and putting on the intentions that you want. Yeah. Wow. So audience members, if there are any questions you have, the queue is now open. Uh, Will, I connected with your brother when you mentioned him as a mentor and a special person in your life. I connected with him on Instagram. What a machine he is and and i think one thing that now where'd you go oh there you are 
Did we have You're a back with that? All right. Um, I connected with your brother through through your saying what a mentor he has yeah. been in your life and what a machine he is. He's a, He's something a, else, a first responder, um, a husband, a father, just an incredible person. I find a lot of his um, connections to his environment are with nature. He's out in nature all the time. He's either dunking himself in cold water or yeah. he's sweating out doing push-ups in the sauna. In, in Who does sauna. that? Yeah. Or who climbs stairs to raise money and torture yourself that way? Can you can you talk a little bit about your brother? Because clearly he's had a substantial influence on yeah. you and he is part of your environment and you go travel to see him and his family frequently. Yeah. I mean, my brother has probably one of been one of the biggest human inspirations to me in my whole entire life. I mean, and nobody have I ever met has been through more and as as strong as mentally and physically than I've ever met, you know, when we didn't necessarily have the best childhood. Um, I mean, we honestly had a pretty shitty childhood and his childhood was 20 million times worse than mine. So like he got like the worst of it of the worst of it to where when, you know, he's 11 years old and he's going to meet his friends and he's got bruises and bumps all over him. And his friends are asking like, what are you going to do? Are you going to do anything? And at 11 years old, he had the mindset to look at his friend and say, it's just making me stronger. You know, and like he knew at such a young age that every awful thing that he's been through is just going to make him stronger. And like he's purposely, intentionally put himself through the most difficult things on this world. You know, like and just because that's when he feels the most alive. That's when he thrives because he's really good at that because he's been training that every day of mm. just making himself as much uncomfortable as possible from the cold or from the hot, just putting your body at the limit. Cause that's when you really discover your potential and, and, and build your own strength is fighting against that resistance. And like, like he's taught me so much, you know, even when I was in my darkest times, like he ran away when he was 16 years old. And that's when we moved to Florida and I didn't talk to him for about 14 years. And I ended up running away when I was 15 years old. So like we had no connection. And when I was like 23 years old, probably at my worst mentally, like just in a really bad spot, really living an evil negative lifestyle. He called me up probably when I needed it the most and said, Hey, it's your older brother. Um, this is my phone number, right? Or no, he messaged me or he found me on Facebook actually. And he messaged me that. So I called him up. We talked for 14 hours straight. And then I ended up booking a ticket and like, going to his house that Christmas and meeting his family for the first time. And then for the first time, like I realized that just because I had a bad childhood doesn't mean I have to be a bad person. Mm -hmm. um, and like, I, I seen that he had such a worse childhood and he was such an awesome human being, you know, like he was sacrificing himself for his family, for his, for his job, his occupation. He sacrificed himself for his country. You know what I mean? Like, like, I've never met a, a, a better, stronger person. And like, he has just been this light for me of this example of like, he put me on books of like, when I couldn't even sit down long enough to read, but I, he noticed I was in a negative place mentally. So he told me about a book called Power of the Subconscious Mind, you know, that tells you, you are kind of what you think about, right? And like, he put me onto the best books I've ever read. He, to, he put me onto the Wim Hof, like, like, he's learned so much and like, he's really even stepping into himself now. Like I finally got him writing because when I first started talking to him all the time, I would always tell him, Matt, every time I talk to you, it feels like I've read three books. <laughs> you know, like, uh, like my IQ raised 15 points, <laughs> you know, like it's crazy. And cause he's read so many books. He's been through so much. Like he's been all over the world and the most awful things and he's learned a lot from it. And like, he's, been one of my biggest inspirations for real and still is it to this day and now one of my biggest motivations to be my best is to help push him to be his best because I know he's only getting started as well yeah the student becomes a teacher so that's that's awesome yeah he he is quite an amazing soul and when I see him walking into cold water water you know you had another question come in on on email about how do you how does he, let's just talk about Matt for a second and then we'll switch, switch to you. How do you prepare mentally for that kind of shock to the body? 
be it yeah. hot or cold, let's just go there. But cold, I've seen you immerse yourself in ice baths before. Yeah. Why are you doing that? And how do you prepare for something like that? Well, <clears throat> I mean, your ability to manage stress and jump out of your comfort zone is the direct correlation with how successful you will be in any single area of your whole life, hmm. right? Like it doesn't matter if that's to be the best father, to be the best mother, to be the best at your occupation, to be the best person, you must know how to step out of your comfort zone and to manage that stress. And the more stress that you can manage, the better you'll be at it. And that's all cold water is, is training your mind and body to deal with stress. Um, that is on the physical side and the mental side, 100%. And when you get really good at managing stress, you'll get really good at doing anything you care about. Mm. You'll, cause you'll be able to take in whatever problems come in, overcome them, learn from them and go to the next thing and keep pressing and keep growing. And, and everything that has ever been accomplished on this whole entire planet in the history of ever took some human being to step out of their comfort zone to step outside the box and to push the no what's normal to them and get off the couch and, and, and be that. And every single time you turn that cold shower on, your mind goes exactly to the place of where it goes before you take that big leap into stepping into your full potential. So pull back, run away, stop, don't go into the cold water. <laughs> exactly, so where your mind goes in the same place to where you ask that girl out or ask for that job promotion, or start your first podcast, or start your first creative, or whatever it is that you need to do, your mind goes to the exact same place as it goes right before you jump in that cold shower. And, the, and every single time you overcome that, and you step into that cold, you just did a deadlift for your mental strength, hmm. right? Like, and, and, and then every single time we're able to step out of our comfort zone, we're doing push-ups for our ability to step out of our comfort zone. Okay. And, and, and that's what the cold is. And it's going to be different for everybody. Cause for example, my brother, he's been through the hardest shit that I've ever seen anyone go through. So it's going to be easier for him to get uncomfortable because his whole life has been uncomfortable. Right. But for some of us who our whole life has been extremely comfortable, like, you know, we've never had to go without a meal, which is very common. You know, we've never had to do anything of true sacrifice of like causing pain, you know, that's, we just got to start what we can start, you know, like what's possible to us. Everybody's on their own journey. You, you can't compare his journey to your journey. We can only learn from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like if you're, if being out of your comfort zone is something that you struggle with, start with just turning that cold shower as, as cold as it can for as long as you can. If that's three seconds, it's kind of like other breathing. Don't start crazy. Just do it. You know, just start it as small and as easy as you can. And that's what builds the strength that is able to fight the resistance of just creating, a, like you have to create a habit that aligns with your goals. So if being able to uh, strengthen your ability to step out of your comfort zone, that's where it was. How can we create a habit that gets us out of our comfort zone every single day? And waking up and jumping in that cold shower is the easiest, simplest way to do it. <laughs> you know, and then on top of the mental side, it's so physical, like it's one of the healthiest things that we can do because it does the same thing to our body. All of the weak cells in our bodies die off. It takes all the stagnant blood and inflammation that's already in our bodies and it wrings all of that out so our heart can pump in that fresh good shit. And mm -hmm. it cleans out the brain fog. Like that's why afterwards it feels like you had a cup of coffee, you're happier, you have this big energy boost because your whole body surged with this fresh blood and oxygen. You feel really fucking good. Yeah. And then it trains your mind and body the ability it just to get stronger and to overcome that stress. Hmm. Wow. Well, and we'll stress is the cause of all inflammation and all disease and everything that holds us back from anything in life. If we can overcome stress, we can overcome anything in our life because that's the only negative that's there is the stress and stress is what you make it. Yeah, I think that's a that's a paradigm shift. That's a that's a perspective shift, a leader shift that we have to make in seeing comfort not as a destination, but as something um, 
comfort isn't the goal. And I think a lot of us think, well, I deserve this. That's part of that narrative. I, I worked hard. Now I can rest. And then rest becomes more of a habit than a reward. And yep. then we're sedentary and then we're fat and then we're unhealthy and then yep. we're depressed. And you know, it's a, yep. it's a tailspin. You, you get what you put in 100%. You get what you put in. So I've, then, heard you, I've heard you yep. say it will that I, I think, I've heard, or I've heard you and others talk about when you try to leave the comfort zone, though, there is a reptilian part of our brain that wants to keep us the same. So that's affectionately called the, the terror barrier. And okay. that, that is required for you to pass through it in order to get to growth. What would be your comment on that? Yeah, like 100%. All growth comes from just discomfort. Like, I promise you, if you look back in your life, the biggest things that you've learned that made you your strongest attributes came from your hardest times, mm -hmm. like 100%. You know, that's what built you your strength to get you those positive things of today are those hard shit that you went through because that's what forces our brain to learn and overcome and to build something new that's going to make us better. You know, and if our goal is to be better, not comfortable because it's one or the other, right? Right. You no, know, if you want to be better, you can't be comfortable. Like if you chase comfort, you'll always be disappointed and you'll always be uncomfortable, right? <laughs> I promise you, if you chase comfort, you'll always be uncomfortable except for tiny little moments. But if you realize that comfort is not the goal, that just getting better is the goal, you get really good at being uncomfortable, right? Yeah. And the better that we can get being uncomfortable, the better we will get. So if you want to get better, like it's just training our body to, get uncomfortable and knowing usually the thing that is the most uncomfortable is what we need to do the most, you know? And that's one thing that I've learned from even reading autobiographies of the people who've accomplished so much. They knew that, that what the thing is that is haunting them, that is the most uncomfortable thing about them. That's, that's where the growth is. Don't run away from it. Like face it head on. And like, yo, like, what do you have for me? Like, what do you have to learn or what do you have to teach me? Because I know that's the path to going from here to here. And here always feels better than here. Yeah, definitely. Wow, Will. Wow. We've been pumping an amazing amount of information out there for over 60 minutes. Thank you for that. I think we're going to have to have another chat with Will Grant. Uh, there's, I've got... Um, I love this. This is awesome. <laughs> I've got 27 questions just from your story that we didn't even get to. Wow. I think they're, they are important enough that we need to continue this conversation. Yeah. So that's way to do that. I'm down for this. Yeah. I think we're going to reschedule, an, uh, not reschedule, we're going to schedule a series of webinars. I think moving forward, I think the audience has enjoyed connecting with you. I'm getting a lot of thumbs up and a lot of positivity. We still have people on the line who are engaged in the conversation. So Will, uh, I guess before we schedule the next one, and I'll email everybody who registered for this webinar, as well as I know you'll communicate with, with uh, your followers, but I know you've been so passionate about your, your giftedness and your strengths being realized in the world that you've created something. So I want you to introduce that to the listening audience because they may or may not know that, you know, you've put the best of you into a project yeah. and I know you're, you're happy to talk about that because I think it's a beautiful thing that you've, yeah. you've created that which has helped you have a renaissance of the Will Grant. And that's been yeah. so awesome to watch as a fan of yours over almost a decade of time to yeah. see your growth, what yeah. you've created and learned from is ma matters and it's a powerful force in this world. So just give us a, an, a brief introduction and we're going to talk more about it on the next webinar. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, if I went back to just this constant journey of how I can make myself feel as best as possible, you know, and then that brought into how I'm contributing. We all want to feel love and value, but we have to learn that if we want to feel love and valued, we have to bring value to other people, you mm -hmm. know? Um, and that comes from dipping into our biggest strengths and, and, and creating something into the world that is going to contribute. And that's really what you know, the, happy health, health, the Happy Healthy Strong course is, is like everything that I've learned throughout my whole life of 
what is the most bang for your buck, like habits and routines that is going to make you feel as best as possible. That's going to have you stepping into your full potential and like just feeling your best every single day. Cause if you start feeling your best every single day, you will live a completely different life over long, long periods. So that's our goal. And that's really what the goal um, is of this course is how can I bring up these other people to stepping into their best self. And it comes with all these habits and routines of what, like the stuff that I learned in my book of just documenting this whole process of what made, what made my body feel as best as possible. What were the movements and the exercise of routines that made my body most alive and feel as good as possible? What were these breathing routines and like how can I implement these types of breathing into my everyday routine because that was the biggest thing that was difficult for, for me is like creating this stuff into a routine like into habits and that's what this course is about is like it starts off just doing it every day not doing it some crazy amount to where you'll burn out in two to three weeks but let me just introduce you to these two things or one thing or three things of these habits that are going to make you feel good mentally, physically. And then every single week it evolves as you evolve, as it becomes easier. It, it, it keeps you on that comfort, that comfort threshold to keep you growing. And then by the sixth week, you're really like figuring out what you're made of, you know, like you're, Holy cow. Like when everything's firing on all cylinders, you're going to feel like a different human being. Momentum. You know, I'm changing. Yeah. 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 Like everything's changing. Like it takes, like 21 days to really start building a habit. So after six weeks, you're really stepping into your full potential. You're not like bogged down by all this brain fog, by all everything around you, you know, wearing you down by the end of the day, like you got more left to give. Hmm. You got more left to give towards your family or whatever you truly care about. If that's starting this creative project or this philanthropy or whatever is important to you, I, I promise you, if you connect with your breath every day for six weeks, you'll start to know what's pretty important to you, you know, yeah. because you'll start to understand yourself more. And the more that we can understand ourselves, I mean, it comes from these habits and routines that we're doing every single day. We are just the makeup of our habits and routines. And that's what I put everything into this six week course. And I mean, I, I cannot be more excited. Like I've been work, like I, I've really been working on this for a little over a year, but I feel like I've been working on it my whole life. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know a what I mean? Like, time like I feel like every, everything led up to like, this is my best creation into the world and this is my contribution. And like, it's only the beginning. And now I'm excited to really get people into this program and start giving others the feeling that I got. And then I can go back and forth with them of how I can even keep improving it and keep improving it, you know? So, I mean, I'm super excited about it yeah and like it's available now on on the website www.thewillgrant.com and you can go in there and check it out and you know ask us any questions of you, you have and we can even get on on a call to see if it's right for you you know because i mean it's not for everybody you know what i mean like it's not for everybody if you're not wanting the change like if you're happy now and you're happy and you're not looking to it, get more out of yourself or get more out of your life. If, you, if you're not wanting to contribute more to the people around you, you know, it may not be for you, you know, like, but let's figure that out, you know, or like, you know, if you got like a, all these crazy pains of like, maybe something else can be best for you, but you know, Hey, let's talk it out and let's figure it out because that's what we're all here for is learning from each other to bring each other up. And especially on crazy times like this, yeah, like especially now. times that like we all got to like, Hey, let's use our intelligence together because nothing great was ever accomplished from one person. You know, it mm. takes a, a, a team of different strengths and the different abilities and different perspectives to really work together to like, let's stop thinking me and you and this person, but let's think of like, as look, this is us as a human species, you know, like this is us as a planet, just how we're one living organism. So is the earth, you know, like if you go, you know, and just sit on the moon and look at the earth, you don't see all these different people. You know, you don't see Jim and Craig and, you know, Henry and, you know, and Gerald. No, you see this one living organism just in the same way as us. If you look at us, you see one living organism, but you don't see all the tiny microbiomes that are in our gut that are all working towards our health, you know? And, yeah. and the more that we can work with others, then the more our internals work better within itself and it connects with the environment. And everything's just beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> that's awesome, man. What a, what a great, a great description. I mean, that's, 
your, your perspective of sitting on the moon and looking at the beautiful blue and green earth is no different than you looking in the mirror and seeing that same potential of beauty. If you're, if you're looking in the mirror and you're not seeing that, I think this is your wake up opportunity is to work with a mentor and a coach like you will. So, so that's exactly like, let's start chipping away those limiting of beliefs and just start creating some habits to make you feel better. Yeah. Because if you don't like what you're seeing in the mirror, let's start improving it, you know? And, and it starts with what we're doing every single day. Like we are just the makeup of what we're doing every day. It's an inside job. Yeah. It's an inside job. Ain't that the truth? (laughs) Love it. Well, we'll here and here, you know? Yeah. This has been such an honor and a privilege to be able to um, instigate and (laughs) dialogue with you. So man, thank you for showing up on this platform. Honestly, man, this is a dream come true. Like this is really me living my best life right now. Like this is what I want to be doing. Like this is me taking all the bullshit that I went through and making it mean something, you know, like, you know, all the pain, sweat, the tears, agony, like this is, this is the life that I want. You know what I mean? Like, like this is my best life. And like, I'm, I'm so grateful that you guys are along this journey with me. And like, I mean, I, I'm, I'm ready to take what I've learned and help other people step into their best life. You know? Love it. Love it. So what is one thing you want to leave the listeners with before we end this webinar and reschedule another one? So when they come back, what's the one thing you want them to have thought about over the, the week or two before we get back together? All right. Well, one is only focus on what you can control. You know, like, especially in these times like this, like it's so easy to consume our mind and to consume our thoughts with all of this outside craziness that we have no control over. And when we do that, it makes everything inside crazy. It stirs up everything inside that our bodies can't work on feeling good. Right. Mm -hmm. So focus on what you can control and that's just stopping and connecting with yourself. So those are the two things like focus on what you can control and take that time with your breath. If you have they say, if you don't have time to meditate for 10 minutes, you should probably meditate for 30. <laughs> wow. Okay. You know, like, and because I promise if you don't have time and you start meditating for 30 minutes a day, you start to realize all this bullshit that's in your life that doesn't need to be this doing nothing but bringing more resistance and more tension in everywhere that you don't want it. Mm. Okay? So just connect with yourself so you can see yourself and and, you know, and understand what you really want so you can start doing what you really want and keep putting that attention on what you can control. And that's your breath because we have control over our breath. And when we have control over our breath, we have control over our life. There's no like, better. Way. Why wouldn't you pick happiness? Why wouldn't you pick being healthy? Right. You and, you know, and that's what we have the ability to unlock within ourselves. It just takes a little work of hearing that conversation. Well done. Thank you, Will. Those are great words to end on. Thank you, audience, for being here. Check your email. Um, we'll be advertising the next webinar here in the next week or so. I think this, uh, we need to maintain the momentum, Will. Here's the magic at work in the world. Yeah. It's the Will Grant. So thanks, Will. Appreciate it. Uh, again, I'm Edwin Adams with disruptcomfort.com. Uh, look forward to working with you again, Will. This was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Edwin, for putting this whole thing on. Like, you know, I can barely figure out my way around a computer myself. So, <laughs> I mean, thank you so much for being a part of all this. And thanks everyone who jumped in on this w- w- with us. And um, thanks for asking questions. And I'm really excited to go through any questions that we missed in the future as well. So thank you. <laughs> all right. See you guys next time. Peace out, everybody.